December SAT scores coming out pretty soon and you are probably really nervous right now. Maybe December was your last one or maybe December was your first one. If it was your last one, congratulations. I'm not sure why you're watching this video. But if you got a couple more chances, then you want to make sure you really understand why you got the score that you got today and come up with a plan so that you can perform better on your next SAT. Let's say you got your score and it's exactly not what you expected out of this exam. You expected like a significant increase, but you only saw a little bit increase or maybe even worse, your score just dropped a little bit. And to understand exactly why that happened, you have to understand where it went wrong. And to find that where it went wrong portion, I'm going to give you a simple equation so that you can self-diagnose exactly where it went wrong and come up with a new strategy and perform better on your next SAT. So let's get straight into it. As a tutor for the past decade, as an outsider looking into all of these high school students trying to raise their SAT score, you only need these two things to raise your SAT score. First one is going to be method times effort. That equals two results. Results meaning your score is going up. You see how there's a multiplication sign right here? That means you're going to have to have both of them. Having just one or the other is not going to get you the results because if you have zero method, but if you have so much effort, 100 times zero is zero. You're not going to see any results. So let's go over exactly what two of these things are. Method means how you are studying. Depending on what your score is, you should be doing certain things and shouldn't be doing certain things for your SAT prep. For example, if your current score is at 500s, then you shouldn't be taking any practice exams right now. You're just not ready. You should be studying concepts right now. If your score is at 700s right now, you shouldn't be just mindlessly taking practice exams after exams after exams after exams. You have to identify exactly where you're making mistakes and find out why you're making mistakes and come up with a plan not to make any mistakes next exam. At a certain score, there are specific things that you need to be doing at that moment to raise your score to the next level. Think about it like this. If you're driving for the first time, you are a beginner. You're not going to put yourself on a highway where cars are going at 100 miles per hour. When you're first starting off, you go to an empty parking lot, you put the car on drive, and then you slowly drive at 5 miles per hour. And once you get comfortable at it, you go at 10 miles per hour and then you start learning how to use the back mirror and the side mirrors and learn how to use your phone while you're driving. At certain stages of your SAT prep, there are specific things that you should be doing and specific things that you shouldn't be doing. And if you didn't really see that much of an improvement on this SAT, then ask yourself, maybe I was doing the wrong thing. Maybe I shouldn't have been doing that. And you might be wondering, what am I supposed to do at my score level? Like, I don't know what to do. Then it's okay. Don't worry. There's going to be a video in the description box down below. There's going to be a link that will take you to a video explaining exactly what you need to do for certain score categories. But wait, don't go to the video. Just finish watching this video because you only know the half the equation yet. You want to know the other half. And the second component of this equation is going to be effort. How much effort did you put in? Not exactly sure how much effort you put in? Then think about how much time you have invested into SAT prep. Did you sign up for the SAT two months before the exam but started studying only about three days before the exam? That might be an issue. Did you sign up for the exam a month in advance but only started studying when there's two weeks left? That would also be an issue. Getting a significant improvement on your SAT score takes more than two weeks, guys. I mean, if it were that easy, everyone, everybody would have 1600s, everybody would be going to Harvard, and everybody would be going to Ivy Leagues, and I don't know. But let's say, but let's say you signed up for three months in advance, and you started studying about three months prior to the exam. Then what could possibly be an issue? Then it comes down to the quality of your work. For the last three months, did you really push yourself? Did you really spend a lot of time studying for the SAT so that you can get a higher score on the next exam? Well, I don't know because I'm just a guy on the internet, but you probably know exactly what you did. Only you know exactly how much effort you put into studying. Not sure if it was a high quality work or not? Then go back to your practice exams and look at the questions that you have missed. Did you really spend a lot of time going over each question exactly why you got that wrong and how you can get it right the next time? Did you really think about that? Or did you go like, hey, I don't know, like this question, I don't know, this is complicated. You know what, let me go to the next practice exam and I, I, I still don't understand this question, but I'm just gonna move on anyways. Did you do that? Because if you did a little bit of that, there's your mistake. You have to be really honest with yourself. If you know that you didn't really put in the work, but if you keep on telling yourself that you did put in the work, but deep down, you know you didn't put in the work, then you're never gonna get better. You have to be honest with yourself. If I wanted this much improvement on my SAT, did I put in this much effort that will go along with it? Or did I just put in this much effort and expected this much result, but got disappointed because I didn't see this much increase. Guys, raising your SAT score really takes a lot of effort. That's why colleges are putting so much emphasis on your SAT score. If it was something that could be raised overnight, then why would colleges even care about it in the first place? Everybody would have 1600. Does that mean I'm gonna have to have a couple weekends where I stay in and not go out and just study for the SAT? Yes. Does that mean I'm gonna have to do this for the rest of my high school career? No. So guys, in order for you to really see a significant result on your next SAT, you have to make sure you have both of these things in order. For method, are you using the right method of studying for your score level? Are you doing the right thing for your score level? 
Effort-wise, are you really spending enough time for SAT prep? And during those times of SAT prep, are you really putting in quality work or are you just kind of BSing your way through it, hoping that everything will work out? And remember guys, this equation is going to be multiplication, it's not addition, which means if your effort is zero, but you have a perfect method, you're not going to see any results. However, if you're doing it the wrong way, if you're using the wrong method, but you're putting in a lot of time grinding it out, then you're not going to see any results. So you have to make sure that you are using the right method and allocating enough time into it and using a quality work and not BS work. And I want to know if your work is BS or not because I'm just a guy on the internet. So guys, take a second, try to actually pause the video and try to think about why it went wrong. Why did you not get the score that you were looking for on this exam? And try to think about exactly why that happened. And if you don't, you're going to do the exact same thing to prep for the next SAT and you're going to get the exact same result and time's running out and you need that higher sat score to go to the college of your dreams so really take a second pause the video think about why these things happen and if you figure it out leave in the comment section down below i would love to hear about it and after some reflection if you come across certain questions then you can also leave them in the comment box down below i mean i'm just a guy on the internet but i don't know who knows i might be able to help you out a little bit so that's going to be it for today's video guys as always thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it and i'll see you guys on the next video Bye bye and one last thing guys, if, if you didn't get the score that you wanted, you're probably really depressed right now. You're going to be really sad. You're like, why didn't I get the score that I wanted? I put in so much time and effort into it. Guys, SAT is not the end of the world. It's not the only thing that's going to get you into college. What we can do from this point is to learn from our mistakes and just do better on the next time. The score is already said and done and there's nothing we can do about it. If you just stress about it, that's, that's just causing you a lot more stress. So try to take today as an opportunity to reflect on what went wrong and come up with a new strategy so that you can do better on your next exam. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one.